All right, so we have been looking at integrating scalar valued functions along lines or curves. Now we're gonna look at integrating vector fields along lines or curves. And so work is a really good application of this idea. And in the case when force is constant, then work just looks like force times distance. However, if the force is non-constant, then work is gonna look like the integral of the force felt by the object as it moves along the particular curve. And when I say the force felt by the object, I mean that the contribution to the integral here, this, this integrand, is, depends on the direction of force relative to the direction of motion. And this might sound fancy, but it's actually something that you uh, know and are very familiar with. When you run up a hill, it's hard. When you run down, it's easy, right? So why is that? Well, so here's our road <clears throat> here's my beautiful picture of a car there we go vroom speeding along okay in this picture the force field is gravity it's pointing straight down we'll just ignore any curvature of the earth etc anywhere that i draw a curve corresponding to the gravity vector field it is pointing straight down if I go um, really high off into space, then, then it's going to be a much shorter arrow. But here at ground level, we'll assume that all these arrows are basically the same height. So now if I'm looking at the contribution, um, like how this affects um, the, direct, uh, the direction of motion right here, the force vector is orthogonal to it. So it has no impact whatsoever. Now, when the car is over here, going up the hill, I should have drawn a simpler car. Um, then we have the force vector, or sorry, the direction vector is going like this. And the, uh, the force vector is going like this. And so if I project to the green, it's actually working against it to slow it down because it's pushing in the opposite direction. And then when you're over uh, on the other side, and I'll just, here's my car. It's this, it's this uh, vector right here. Now, gravity is going in uh, the same direction. So when it projects, it's gonna be helping by that much. Okay, this is the idea um, about that the contribution to the integral depends on the direction of force. So let me just write some of this down in symbols. If we have that um, <clears throat> F at C of T, so at the, the force at the given location on the curve, if it's parallel, so to the, the direction of motion, so this is the tangent vector, and lambda is positive here, then we have that the force is helping. If we have that the force at a given location is anti-parallel, so it's coming with a minus sign, then this means that the force is hindering the motion. And if we have that the force at a given location is orthogonal to the um, tangent of motion, then um, <coughs> no effect. So uh, ignoring friction, uh, it's, it's not going to do anything to slow down the car on the flat, right? So what we really need to take into account then is this, the dot product between the direction of motion, whoops, wrong tool, hold on. The dot product between the direction of motion and the vector field at a given time. So here, when I take the dot product, uh, that'll give me this projection that points in the negative direction. So uh, in order to do the projection, we need a tangent vector. So the unit tangent vector uh, <clears throat> on, on the curve parameterized by C of T is, so we have capital T for tangent, at time t, 
And so it's going to be defined as our velocity vector, but normalized. So that it's a unit tangent vector, right? So this is that's the the unit part. To make a unit vector. Okay, so then the size of the um, the component of the force, which is parallel to F, is um, <clears throat> the projection of F onto T which is just f dot t. And so this is why we use uh, a unit vector, because the full projection formula actually usually comes with this guy in the denominator. But since we've cooked it up to be a unit vector, that magnitude is just 1, and so the whole thing just cancels out. OK, so what are we integrating? So back in the beginning, uh, that, that integral with respect to force, that part right here, this is going to be f dot t. That's the force that we feel. So what have we learned? The work is going to be um, the integral over c of f dot t ds, which in terms of the parameterization is the integral from a to b, say that's our, our parameter domain. And then we've got f of c of t dotted now with our unit tangent vector c prime of t over magnitude of c prime t uh, and then this whole thing is times ds and ds is magnitude c prime t dt and look at that it's so perfect as if it were made for it the ugly parts cancel the square roots are gone the clouds part, the sun shines, the birds sing. And it's the integral from A to B of F of C of T just dotted with C prime of T dt. And so this is uh, abbreviated, if you don't want to refer to the abbreviation, or sorry, if you don't want to refer to the parameterization, it's the integral over C of F dot dc. So this, this part here is the part that we call dc. And so you see, it looks just like we've used the, the chain rule on c when we tried to make c into a function of t.